We know it works. But the question we often get is context. How does it work? So when, when this study was done, they also, alongside the statistical meta-analysis, ran a qualitative synthesis. So that's looking at the qualitative research around pharma field schools. And what they found was that there are certain contexts under which it works, certain conditions. The complexity of the curriculum, how difficult it is, how challenging it is, who delivers it, that matters. The nature of the training offered, is it a field school, is it a combination of field schools um, and classroom teaching, is it, how, how is the training delivered matters. So it's not enough to know it works, it's, you're now learning about how it works. The observability of the practice, can you see the benefits? Are there things changing in the way, in, in your production? That helps, you, that helps reinforce learning and that helps you want to learn more. So that, these are the conditions you have to um, think about. This is very important. We talk a bit about the social sciences and bringing that into, into our research. Social capital. What networks do you have? What family do you have? What resources do you have? What access do you have? And education. And education. The education and, level of the farmer. And the education level of the farmer. And aid. And aid. <laughs> <laughs> access to seeds and social networks. Assistance in marketing. And the way in which the, the programs are targeted. If someone flies in from the FAO or the World Bank and says, you're going to have farmer field schools, it doesn't work. If a community wants farmer field schools, it stands a better chance of working. And so now, as a minister, not only do you know it works, you now have a sense about how and where it works. If you're trying to target, top down, first off, if, you're, if your minister is trying to target farmer field schools to a group of population that has limited social capital, you can say, well, on the balance of the evidence we have, it's less likely to work. You may want to think about a different intervention. If, however, you're targeting it to a group that has higher social capital, that's good. You know you stand a better chance of your, of your um, intervention working. You know there are other things you have to consider, access to markets, um, social capital, networks, things like that. So you can now communicate nuance and complexity, which is what we're trying to do. We're trying to communicate nuance and complexity of evidence. It's very rarely yes or no. I'm going to just stop there for a moment. Any questions? No. Right, so we've sold you um, systematic reviews, I hope, and how wonderful and compelling they are. But there's a whole, it's, it's not just from our field schools, it's not just WASH, there are whole areas, themes, areas, sectors that have systematic reviews. This slide is going to be on the download so you can go away and play with these databases of systematic reviews. But the key, points I want to draw on this are the 3 IE website right at the top, which focuses on systematic reviews focused on low and middle income countries. And then we have the DFID uh, for the research output site, which has a, co a collection of systematic reviews, rapid evidence assessments, and other research products that DFID has commissioned, all freely available. If you're interested in health, you have the NICE um, website. If you're interested in environments, you have collaboration of environmental evidence. There are systematic reviews on hundreds, if not thousands, of topics. So my key message is, when you get those research questions, please, less is more. If you have a policy brief or, or a response to a minister that has eight studies, eight out of what, a hundred? Always start with synthesized evidence. That's how I do it anyway, but that's what, I, that's what we're trying to convey here. Please look for what the body of evidence says. And there are all these tools to help you. But of course, it's not always possible to do statistical meta-analysis. We, we, we know that. You don't always have research that fits the PICO framework. We don't always have all the data. But there are other tools you can use to help you tell a story. And one of those tools is narrative systematic reviews. So what they do is they provide a narrative of what the evidence says. They don't synthesize evidence. They don't aggregate the evidence. They give you a summary of individual pieces of research that meets certain quality criteria. They provide statistics about the particular studies. So again, they don't combine or analyze the statistics and aggregate. They tell you what individual studies say. And they provide a summary of analysis of what the evidence suggests. Now, this is, a, to me, is a critical bit. It's that link between what we know and what we conclude, the inferential gap between what we know and what we conclude. So there are other tools of synthesis that we can use where we don't have the sort of um, homogeneity of the PICO framework, but it still allows us to look at the body of evidence. So we showed you the previous slide, places that you can go to, or anybody can go to, to find existing systematic reviews, as Alex said. But you, sh you might have wanted to know by now, well, where do you find this stuff, okay? And some of you said, search uh, on the previous flip over here, 
you said something like, go to uh, uh, academic databases. Now, that's what's on the screen now. Who, who here would consider themselves primarily a scientist or a researcher? Yeah, there's quite a few of you. So, in a sense, this is directed at you, but other people, you're welcome to know about it as well. So if you're a researcher and you want to do a review of any nature, you've got to find the source material. Where are the 13,500 studies? Well, we search, um, uh, when we do a full systematic review, we may, we may use up to 20 or 30 databases, depending on what we're doing. The ones on the screen now, are, I've selected because they're sort of topic or sector related. If you want to know about education, ERIC, Education Research Information Catalog, is the global evidence base for education. And it's freely accessible, except you don't get full service. And I'll come on to that in a minute. It's half, the, it's freely accessible, but not the whole works. If you want to know about the economics of a problem, are, are, are uh, farmer field schools cost effective? You want to know an economic appraisal, Econnet is the global evidence base for economics. So anything that's been published in economics in the last 48 years will be on that database. It's massive, hence why we need an information specialist to help you search it. Medline is for medicine. Psychinfo is for psychology, psychiatry, mental illness, and things like that. Sociopar will be for social welfare, social policy, some of the anthropology work. These are sector and science specific databases that are really helpful. These two are helpful to policy makers because they, Pace International and Policy File are repositories of uh, briefings from other countries. There may be a briefing put up to a minister on farmer field schools. You might want to refer to it. By the way, I don't know, but it, there could be. I've often found briefings that we've borrowed, stealed, we haven't plagiarized, um, but where we've taken it, or we've contacted the person who wrote it and said, where did you get your evidence from? How robust is it? Can you send us your evidence base? So these are basically source materials to find primary data. They are not systematic reviews, they are for primary data. Now the question that's come up in the earlier masterclass is quite rightly, particularly people from coming from the global south is, I don't have access to these, okay? And that's absolutely right. Um, so how do we respond to that? Well, I've got three or four suggestions. The first suggestion is, um, we can look at those, well, five now. <laughs> One suggestion is some of them may be freely available, but only to limited access, like ERIC and Econlit. You can get to the database, but the annoying thing is you can't download anything. You can't get free text downloads, so you can't read it, which is not very helpful. But at least you can find out what's out there. So if you want to get the full works, what you have to do, option number one, if you are near or part of a major university, you've probably got access, okay? So if you, you need to make sure you're, what we're doing in South Africa, we're trying to align researchers doing this work with the big universities, such as University of Cape Town, University of Johannesburg, and Rhodes University, because they've got them. Second, in any department, in any country, you've probably got a, um, a, a research council, or research councils, plural, they will have access to some of them. So in South Africa, I use the Human Services Research Council. They are the data, they have got some of these databases. If you can't do that, uh, we can encourage partnerships between particular, we, we at 3IE had started getting people in the Global South to partner with some of the Northern uh, universities so they can get access to their databases, they do combined research. And that worked to a limited extent. Um, so there's some of the things you can do. Now, going forward, as we move into the era of open access, this should become much easier. A lot of these databases are going to open access. The trouble is that at the moment, they're owned by people who make an awful lot of money out of them. So we're in a very difficult position, but they are coming on stream. And I think if I do this masterclass in five years time, this will be much less of an issue.